Hello and welcome to Geordie Leather. This is part two of the industrial sewing machine mini course. So before we get into that, as usual, thank you for everyone that has entered the February 2021 giveaway. Um, if you haven't already done so, please check out geordieleather.com and you can enter there for free. So let's move on. So today we're going to talk about speed reduction of industrial sewing machines. In the first part, we did a very general um, overview of the machine, but today we're going to talk, a very, talk about a very important topic, and that's slowing your machine down so you can use it with leather work. Now, I've purposely undone the reduction of my machine so you can see it done from scratch. So I'm going to show you the machine first at its normal uh, factory settings speed that you would get it when it comes from the manufacturer and you'll see why it's not really suitable for leather. So we'll head across to the machine and I'll show you how the speed system works when you first get the machine before we make some changes. So we'll do that now. Okay, so this is the speed control box on the machine. Now to turn it on you just press the on switch and give it a few seconds. Um, you'll hear the, the foot rise when it comes on. Now this is the screen you get, it's a very basic display and not always easy to understand but I'll quickly go through the, the main features. So when you get the P and the circling little dash that means it's ready for action and you can start sewing. Now before you do that you need to adjust the speed. Now this particular machine um, I believe has speed ranging from 500 revs per minute up to about the 3000, I think that's right. Anyway, to change the speed there are two buttons. There's a P button and an S button below the dial, the indicator. If you press the P button until you see what's meant to be a V but it actually looks more like a U and then press the S button that shows you the current speed. So that 05 is the lowest speed this machine will do which is 500 uh, revs per minute. To increase the speed you just press the S button and you see it increases it will go up to 30 which is 3000 sorry it could be 30,000 revs per minute. Anyway it'll go back to five. A little flashing dot means that this setting hasn't been saved. So if I see I want to change it to eight. To save it you just press the P button again and then that's now been saved. So to go back to the original screen where you've got the P, just press the button a few times and then the speed will be set to what you just set it at. But I want to show you the slowest speed possible on this machine so we'll go back and change that to so press that and then the speed button it's currently at 8 so we'll go back to 5 which means you have to go right through all the speed numbers. You can see the button's flashing so it hasn't been saved so press the P button again to save it and it's now saved at that speed. If you go back to the main home button screen we're now ready to sew. So I'm going to show you on this machine uh, what the slowest speed looks like. So we'll come over to the to the um, the business end. I'll zoom out slightly so you can see that a bit better. Now I'm going to press the pedal. See this is the slowest speed you can get with this machine at its factory settings. And that's quite slow for most materials but for leather that's just impossibly fast so it's no good. So to sew leather that's just too fast so the task now is to reduce that speed even further. Ideally the sort of speed you're looking for is about one stroke per second. That's about right for leather work. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the current belt system and then show you how to change it. So if we come round to this end of the machine, I'll zoom out slightly, you can see currently the drive belt comes from the balance wheel and goes down a slot 
and under take the camera off there under to the motor you can see there that the belt comes down and attaches on to the motor so in order to slow a machine down we have to introduce an extra set of pulleys which changes the ratio of the pulley system so that it slows down the final stroke of the machine. Now it's quite a simple process but it, there are two ways you can do it. Um, if you have good practical skills you're handy with a, a saw and a drill and you're comfortable doing a little bit of metal work the cheapest option is to do it yourself. But there is a second option if you don't have those skills which we'll discuss in a moment but if you look at the bench this is the parts you actually need to create a speed reduction system um, obviously you're going to take off the existing belt so you won't need that anymore you put it away but you will need two new belts i'll show you how to measure for those in a moment so we're going to create a little pulley system which consists of a large wheel pulley and a smaller diameter pulley. So what's going to happen is that the, the belt from the balance wheel on the machine is going to go around this much smaller diameter pulley which will reduce the uh, speed considerably. So you can get these pulleys on eBay and most other um, pulley suppliers. They're quite economical say well this is the cheaper way of doing it but it does require a bit, a bit of hand skill so in addition to the two pulleys I mean this is a 135 mil diameter and this is a 45 mil diameter pulley so you need to get one of each the important thing is that they all have the same diameter um, hole because you're gonna have to buy a 15 millimeter diameter rod and 15 millimeter diameter hole pulleys that is the industry standard so it shouldn't be an issue getting a hold of these things so so both pulleys have a 15 millimeter hole center hole um, you can get choose different sizes if you want a certain kind of speed but I find that this is a good combination um, in addition to the rod you need to have two um, little bearings which hold the rod. Now these again inexpensive um, so the rod sits in inside there it's locked in position slide on each of the pulleys will lock it all together and I'll show you that in detail but two things to bear in mind when doing this obviously the round and the rod is round and the hole is round so you need a way of stopping them the pulley from just spinning loosely on the the rod so you need to lock the pulleys to the rod now we do that now you can either you can either buy pulleys with little grub screws already drilled and tapped I didn't I bought ordinary pulleys without those I wish I had paid the extra and gotten pre-tapped but all you basically have to do once you get your pulley is to take a drill bit of the right size for your screw they're made of aluminium so it's very soft metal it's very easy to drill so drill through with your drill and if you've got a tap and die set um, cut a thread for the particular size you're using a grub screw or a small bolt so do that for the large and the small pulley and put your little grub screws in you can see you do have to have a few basic metal working tools to do this but if you haven't there is a solution coming up don't worry so the bearings generally come fitted with uh, very small grub screws so that they're not a problem. So to assemble this little package you take your rod, you put it through, or before you do that, again because it's a cylinder rod you need something for the grub screw to screw into, to a flat surface. So what I've done with my rod, if you can see that on the camera, I just took a file and just flattened a small section of it with a file so that the bottom of the screw can press against that rather than trying to press it around press against a round surface so file off just a little bit just to make a flat surface on one part of the bar okay so we'll put these bits together and see how it all works so we've got your bar 
your flat surface and you've got your bearings. Now it doesn't matter which way they go around but I prefer to have the bit that sticks out on the end but like I say it's not that important. So we put one bearing on and take a little Allen key wrench. Um, if you can try and manoeuvre it so that the little grub screw is hitting the flat part of the bar that'll give it a bit more grip. And then just tighten that with your Allen key wrench and tighten the second one. Okay so that's one end done. Um, so you've got two pulleys to go in the middle. Now they've got a flat end and a bit end that sticks out. So you want the distance between the two pulleys to be as close as possible so the belts haven't got to spread out too much. So for example you wouldn't put them this way because there'd be a big gap between this pulley and this pulley. So turn them around so that the flat ends are together and the distance between here and here is reduced. So therefore the belt hasn't got to deviate from its natural running course. So we slide on each pulley again I'm lining up the little grub screw with the flat surface on the bar put in your second you can tighten that one first if you want okay, and just tighten it with your allen key and then put your second one on Again, making sure the flat surface against the flat surface. Put that there. And again, just line up the iron key with a flat part of the bar. Just tighten those up. Making sure that pulleys are snug together. And then putting on the, the other bearing again protruding bit sticking out. And just try and line up one of the grub screws at least with the flat surface. Tighten that down and tighten the second one. Okay, so I mean that is basically it. It doesn't look very much, but that will change the speed of your sewing machine to a nice, slow, controlled speed. So the next job is to physically fit this to the table of the machine. So let's head across the table and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so this is the existing setup. See the belt from the pulley, sorry the balance wheel, goes down this slot and hooks onto the motor. So we're going to be fitting this device here. You can see the existing holes where I've took it off. So first thing to do is take off the bobbin holder, the bobbin winder. Just remove that so it's out the way. And then because you're moving um, you're putting the bigger pulley than was originally designed for this slot you have to extend the slot by a couple of inches depending on the size of the pulley you, you, you bought now just drill a hole the same diameter as the width of the slot this was 25 mil and then just cut with a jigsaw or a, carefully with a hand saw up to that hole to extend the slot now be very careful um, there are wires underneath the bench here so make sure you unclip and pull back any electrical cables and of course unplug the machine before you do any of this. So then use your saw to cut that slot out and then it's then ready to swap the belts over. So we'll do that next. Okay, so here's a view from underneath the table. It's not often I'm under the table these days. So as you can see, um, there's lots of cables under here and this is your slot, so you need to be careful unclip the cables and to pull them out of the way when you cut your slot. So you can see that the existing belt comes down and goes on to the motor pulley. So the first job is to remove that belt. So we do that by taking the tension off the belt by lowering the machine first. 
Okay, so to release the tension on the belt, there's a little clip on the front of the um, machine. Just undo that, and the whole machine will then tilt backwards. It's quite heavy, so just do it slowly. But as you can see, that releases the tension of the belt. So just slip the belt over the balance wheel and take it off. And just lock that back into position. Okay, the belt should now just unhook from the pulley and the motor. There we go. Now this little cable is for the synchronizer. We need to unplug that from the back before we can release the belt. So we'll do that next. It just there's a little plug on the back of the um, the motor switch box. Just unplug it, and there we go. So there we go. I'm on my knees again. So that's the old belt off. So the next job is to fit this little pulley contraption onto the bench surface. So we'll do that next. So as you can see I've already pre-drilled the holes from where I had it originally. Um, one thing to bear in mind, a mistake I actually made, is that I forgot to allow, uh, when I went deciding on the size of the small pulley, uh, allow enough space, enough height on the bearing so that the bottom pulley would clear the surface of the bench. So this is going to sit in here. Actually going to sit in, yes, that way, that's right. Um, but as you can see, the small pulley is catching on the surface of the bench. There's two ways you can deal with that. You could cut out a further section of the bench to allow for that, or as I did, just make two little um, pack and p packing pieces which you can sit on and that raises the the pulley by enough for the smaller wheel to spin so as you can see when they're in position the wheel, sorry, the wheels spin freely on the bearing nice and smooth so I'll put this together it's just simply held on by some long bolts I'll do this one so you can see it. So bolt through. And then a nut and a washer on the bottom. So I won't bore you with watching all of that, but we'll come back once that's done. One thing I did forget to mention before you fix this to the table, you need to put your belts on, otherwise you won't get them on. So the and we serve the, where am I, the smaller belt goes on the the smaller belt goes over the big motor down the hole and the bigger belt goes over the small motor so where were we? So. Loosely just fit the two belts and reposition the little packing pieces if you're using them. But like I can say if you can buy bigger bearings or taller bearings, you won't have this issue to deal with. So again, I can't see what I'm doing from this angle, but never mind, we'll find the hole. There's the hole. So we put four bolts in and we're just going to put some nuts on the bottom, washers and nuts, and we'll tighten those up, and I'll come back to you after that. Okay, here we are under the bench again, and it's time to fit the pulley, sorry, the belt to the pulley on the motor. Now, as you can see, the belt won't stretch across there. So, on all motors, on some machines, they have this little adjustable rod with two nuts. We just simply undo
undo one of the nuts on the top to release that and that gives you a bit of flexibility in the motor as you can see that so we just push it up slightly you may have to undo the bottom nut a bit as well maybe even take it off so you can see that gives you some adjustment to put the belt on so again doing it with one hand and holding a camera not easy but we'll do our best I'll come back to that put the belt on we just need to tension so I tighten the nuts to tight tension the belts now ideally you want about a centimeter of flex in the belt so we're almost there so we'll just tighten the bottom nut a bit and check that again so that's about what you want once you get that just tighten down the locking nut and that is your motor belt fitted now what you may find because you've changed the angle of the normal belt the, the cover might actually rub against the um, new position so what I had to do was to just loosen off this back plate which holds the plastic cover on and just move the screw to a different position so I can adjust the position of the bracket which holds the cover on and that just slides onto there one thing I forgot to mention earlier is about the belts now you're obviously going to have to buy two new belts because your existing belt just won't do the job so um, you need to buy two belts uh, most industrial machines have what's called a v-groove pulley and they use an m-section belt now an m-section is very important so if you look at the belt itself you can see it has a, an m number now the number is the length of the bench belt the length of the belt in inches so you need for this particular machine this particular setup that's the Tyso uh, TY 3600C1 cylinder arm machine if you did get the same model by the way there is a link in the description if you want to get the same model you need to buy two belts one needs to be in M36 inch and the other one needs to be in M27 inch so if you're not sure what size you need if you're using a different machine different setup then when you measure your belts they are measured internally on the narrowest part of the, the belt so to get them the length of the belt you need install your pulley system as I've shown you but don't fit the belts obviously because you haven't got them yet so take a piece of string and wrap it around the the, the pulleys till it's taut and that is the length of the belt you actually need so Simple procedure, measure your belt, order them, and then you're ready to go. So that's it for belts. Just thought I'd mention that. Okay, so the final step is to attach the belts to the sewing machine, and then we're basically ready to go. So let's do that. Remaining belts um, left to fit. So one thing to remember is that you must put your synchronize a cable through the belt first so the belt can go around it now obviously we need to unlock the machine at the front tilt it forward so we can slip the belt on over the drive the balance wheel just tension that pull it back make sure it's in the grooves and just lock it in position now we should have about a centimetre worth of travel on the belt. Now, there we go. The final job is just to plug back in your cable into the back of the control box and that's that done. And the final task is just to refit the bobbin winder. Now, because you put the new mechanism in, the original holes won't, won't line up. So, uh, you have to move your bobbin winder a bit to the right. So, just drill a couple of holes and re-screw that into position. You want it so that when the lever is pushed forward, 
the wheel is engaging with the belt like so just gently and then when it's released it's not so that's what you want two screws in there job done so we are done now for the big test will it be slower let's have a look so I'm just going to very gently press the pedal let's see what we get so as you can see that's approximately one stroke per second you can vary it depending how much pressure you put on the pedal I'm going to do one stitch at a time so one two three four so I've got full control over the stitch I can do a stitch at a time in leather quite easily press the reverse lever and it goes backwards so there we go so there we have it we have reduced the speed of an industrial sewing machine which is now perfect for leather work so I did mention earlier that if you don't have the technical skills to drill tap metal and so on there is an alternative method you can buy a pre-made assembly for the pulley system which you just simply screw either the underside or the top of your sewing machine table now if you if you're in the uk they're a bit difficult to get a hold of if you're in the us or other parts of the world they're quite easy to get a hold of but i have put a link in the description where you can get this mechanism there's a picture of it just there to give you an idea what i'm talking about so if you can't manage with the practical side of building it yourself it is slightly more expensive and because it's heavy cast iron the shipping is also quite expensive but the option is there if you want it check out the description for the link and if it's easier get yourself one of those so that's it for part two um, in part three uh, we're going to be looking at the finer detail of sewing with a machine so we'll be covering things like needle sizes thread sizes how to choose the right combination for the material you're using stitch length bobbins winding bobbins all that good stuff so that's something to look forward to so as usual if you haven't already checked out georgieleather.com head across there it's got the biggest range of tools materials for the leather worker and it's all free shipping anywhere in the world so please check it out if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and as always i do appreciate a like and please leave comments i love to hear your comments your comments encourage me to make more videos so the more comments i get the more videos i make so thanks for now and we'll see you next time bye bye